Well hey folks, welcome back to Learning Lost Skills. Today I want to talk about cleaning my taki or the hen of the woods mushroom and preserving. Because back through history, you needed to learn how to forage. That's part of your food. You just didn't have any stores to go run to. So learning to preserve, harvest, utilize any wild resource is pretty important. And uh, recently looking around on YouTube I've seen some pretty poor videos on how to clean a hen of the woods. We'll just get into that just a little bit but then the main thing is today I'm making my favorite jerky. Yeah that's a pure vegan pure natural jerky from one of the healthiest mushrooms there is. It's in the top three of the best medicinals. As a hen of the wood grows, it grows all around grasses, sticks, branches, leaves, you name it. It just completely envelops them. And you can see that's a pretty dirty mushroom. This is probably the dirtiest wild mushroom there is to clean, as far as my experience. And it's just full. You got to clean it up. All you need is a toothbrush and a knife. And it's not going to matter if you rinse these out. Now because I'm making jerky, I want nice thin, thin pieces. And look in through there for the dirt. Little bits of grass. Okay, that's good. Use stock and all when you're making jerky. See any dirt? Cut it off. want to go quarter inch. It's just perfect. For making jerky you can use the whole thing as long as you get it clean. Another thing with hens is they're often very full of bugs. You'll find all sorts of creepy crawlies in there. Get in there, get get it good. Can't get it. Move on. Just there's a lot of mushroom to clean. On this guy, when I harvested it, starting to go south, it's got a little bit of green mold. We're getting rid of that. See how that junk is all the way through it? Dirt's running right out and up in there. One of the guys showing on YouTube there's just so much of this it was crazy. He even spoke about some of the customers chipping teeth on rocks. Because how they grow, they'll grow, like I said, they grow around everything. Right in the middle of the plant. 
whether it's dirt, tree bark, you name it, you'll find it. Okay folks, we have our three hens cleaned up. That's the yield for it. That'll need to be boiled for about 10 minutes. This is our cutaway, including a rock that was about dead center in the uh, larger of the matakis. Wouldn't want to bite into that. Now the hen of the woods, if you want right now, you could just bag these up and freeze them. They'll be fine. You don't have to do anything beforehand. You don't have to cook them first. But we're going to make some jerky. We're set up there. If you're wondering about that weird little knife, I'm a blacksmith. Sometimes I see something I want to have a little fun. I'll make knives out of all sorts of things. So, let me go boil this. We'll come back, make some marinade, get that going, marinate it overnight, and then tomorrow we'll finish the process. We have the pot of mushrooms on the boil right now. While we wait, we need to mix up some, some marinade. Now, you can use whatever recipe you like. This is, uh, into my version of a uh, teriyaki sauce. Do about three light capfuls of liquid smoke. Pretty good hit of Tabasco. I like it hot. Didn't count it, just kind of, you know, by guess, by gosh. Worcestershire. Just about the right amount in this jar, about a cup. So we'll finish that off. A good bit of soy sauce. See if that'll pop off. I think about half this jar. There's no real rhyme or reason when you're making sauces. You can, you know, just create your own. Be happy. Look online, there's lots. You can even go to the store and buy your own recipe. This is teriyaki sauce. Again, I'm going over oh, about a half a bottle. Crushed red pepper flakes. I'm do a nice little handful. And then lastly, some garlic powder. If I had some onion powder, that would be going in it. You know, nice little handful. Or two. Really that simple. Shake it up, let those flavors combine. And if those mushrooms get done boiling, I'll put them into some Ziploc bags. Use half of this per bag. I'll probably need two gallon bags. <clears throat> like I said, with jerky mushroom, this might impromptu recipe. Uh, I'm winging it all the time. I really don't mess with strict recipes at all. Feel free to use your own recipes and you can pretty much use any kind of mushroom you like. And they all make wonderful jerky. Super, super healthy. Okay, mushrooms are strained out. Got, oh, about a half a gallon. But I want some room in the bag. I split this marinade between the two. 
Doesn't get any tougher. Try to get some of those red flakes into both. Red pepper flakes like to float on top. Close them up and get that marinade everywhere. I'll probably toss these around two, three times before the end of the night. Toss them around again first thing in the morning. But you got to get that. You can see that changing colors up. Getting all that good flavor in there. That's it for doing the marinade. There are a few more spices. I'll put them on last thing, right? When we go into the dehydrator. So stick around for that. The liquid sauce. That's just pure goodness. It's fantastic for soups. I you know, love it with like ramens, you name it, all kinds of soups. Definitely, definitely save that. We've got this strained out. I'll clean up my quart jars and those will go in the fridge and I'll use those within the next two weeks on quite a number of meals. So stay tuned, we'll be back to finish off making some mushroom jerky. One of the healthiest jerkies you can possibly make. We'll see you real soon. Well folks, it's go time. I'm going to be drying mine in my smoker. You can use a dehydrator if you want, you can use the oven in your house, they all work good. But I like to get that little extra smoke and get it rolling on in there. So, while I get things going, reach down there and hit that like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, we'll get to those two most needed spices when making any kind of jerky. We need salt. Salt is a disc and it helps take up some moisture, helps things dry up. And of course, just some coarse ground black pepper. Great flavor, go a little heavy on it, some of it's going to fall off. And you can always just rub it off later. So let me move you in close, we'll start uh, getting this process rolling. As you can see, it doesn't take a very big fire. Just enough to maintain about 175 degrees heat. Gonna get some wood chips in there. That's from Jack Daniels Company. And a couple of pieces of mulberry, fresh and green. Once those get going, they'll make a lot of smoke. We just keep it about 175, 180, right in there. Works perfect. And I'll show you the rest of the setup. A little tin foil on the racks, all you need. And we're just gonna start spreading these about. You can get them in there pretty thick. They're going to shrink a lot. No question about that. Oops, drop one. Even the fire has to get a share. Yeah. Just find those last few spots. You can get them in there pretty packed because, you know, mushrooms are mostly water. They're going to dry down dramatically. Ah, those are good. Be generous. It'll always rub off. I love lots of black pepper. Salt is definitely going to help bring up the fluids, help them release all that water content.
and add a little flavor to it. So we're going to shut this up for a good hour. We'll be back, we'll flip everything, and then we'll let her go some more until they're done. Well, we've done a good hour at staying right at 180 degrees. Don't expect them to be dry yet, but it's time to flip them. Starting to get some nice smoke color to them. I'll get these flipped. We're starting to run out of daylight, so I might have to come in with some extra light. But it will take another, oh, two, three hours at least. We'll get them flipped. We'll get some more seasoning on them. And then we'll be back. Well, it's dark 30. Just flipped them one more time. Put a little more fuel on the fire. We're going to run, keep this running about, oh, 180 here. I'll keep an eye on it for the next, probably, I don't know, maybe three hours or so. And if it's not done by then, I'll just do one more round of fuel, just enough, and then we'll uh, pick it up tomorrow. Remember, everything on here is cooked, so we're good to go. You can eat them right now if you want, but they and they are looking delicious. Well, hey guys, time for the reveal. I just stoked the fire several more times last night. When I hit that level of flavor, smoky flavor, that I liked, I stopped adding any of the wood chips, anything like that, and just went with straight lump charcoal keep the heat up and then the last thing I did was layer in that coal so I had a good long burn big reveal now do you remember lots of moisture in mushrooms so when you dry them out it's kind of like jumping into a nice cold lake there's a whole lot of shrinkage man there is some goodness We'll bring you in for a close shot. Well, here you go in all its glory. Just that fantastic mushroom jerky. Remember how thick that stack was? Yeah, it's gone down a lot. Now, I like to dry mine down plenty, so I store it just in a Ziploc bag. I don't have to keep it in the refrigerator. Bring it down to where you got a little, little bit of crunch. Otherwise, you might get a little bit of mold start to appear on these. It's plenty tasty. Hope you like my video here, and thanks for stopping by Learning Law Skills. We hope to see you all down the road soon. Take care, my friends.